But as I was saying, I can only give you what I read. That's it. Can't give you nothing more, nothing less. I may break it down so you can understand, but I can only give you what I read. You understand? From the beginning. Well, I'm just going to start at the New, Contest New Testament. When often in the Word of God it talks about the beginning. What's the beginning? Genesis. Is that, is that self-explanatory? The beginning of what? That's like you. That's for you people to believe that Jesus only appeared one time when he was born from one man. That's like taking the fact that Jesus has been around since the beginning away. Just putting Jesus as just coming through the Virgin Mary. It's taking all Jesus power and glory from the Old Testament. All the signs and wonders that he showed you in the Old Testament and all the signs and wonders he showed you in the New Testament. Same Lord. You can't take that away. Oh, I don't like that God. His was wrathful. You think anything's changed? You see, when Christ returned, somebody posted something that when Christ returned, he won't no lo longer be that child in the manger anymore. He's going to be a man. The son of God. And his mission is going to be the same mission. It's just going to complete it. Everything he's talked about, everything he's warned us about, he's going to complete it. And everybody's not going to be saved. Yes, he died for the sins of the world. But the world has to accept him. And if the world don't accept him, how can he die for them if they don't accept it? Do you understand? How can the Muslim faith depend on Jesus' death on the cross if they don't accept and death and resurrection on the cross if they don't accept that Jesus was resurrected? How can they be resurrected with someone they don't believe in? Does it make sense to you? How can the whole world live with something they don't believe when it comes time for him to come back? And because you said when it come back, that's it. And every knee gonna bow, but it's gonna be too late for some. You know why? Because some already been bowed down to the Lord. Some has already been believing in the Lord. Some has already been believing his words. But some are not. It's like when he come back, you're going to bow anyway. Whether you believe it or not. So you might well believe now. That's what's going to save your soul. Because it can be too late. There can be a point of no return. You see, living in this world, you see, let's put it this way, look. When Christ made the tabernacle for Moses, he gave instructions. He gave people instructions of what to do. How to make it, how to create it. You understand? You know, for all the time. For God all the time. If you live for God, you live for God all the time. He didn't create that tabernacle for just an annual thing. It didn't just, he didn't just set the tabernacle up once a year. It was set up all year. Do you understand the deception? If you live for God, you live for him all the time. You understand? Except by the days, the feast days he give you. The holy days. Like I said, people, this year is going to be a different year in regards to what God wants me to say. You need that no man teach you. When don't you need that no man teach you? Because you listen to the truth. And what can a man tell you if you're listening to the truth? A man that's not listening to the truth. What can a man that's not listening to the truth tell you that know the truth? Yes, God works through other people. Yes, he can. But guess what? It's going to line up. No, every day sometimes I talk to somebody about Christ. Some form or fashion. It doesn't matter. Somehow, some way. Every day I talk to somebody about Christ. And lately this year, I've been talking to two people so far this year. My first day of work of this year was Monday, yesterday. I was there with a co-worker named DeVal. And my other 
cousin named co-worker Denzel. And we were talking and we were on one accord. I was like, I've been reading Genesis and Exodus. Deval, I've been reading Exodus and Genesis too. Denzel, I've been reading Exodus and Genesis also. So when we talk, we're on one accord. And we're talking about the exact same thing. I didn't make them understand this. They already understood it. They already been studying for themselves. Now we're in one accord. We're in unison. You understand? How? Did I do that? No, they took it upon themselves to learn on their own. And it just happens that we all fall into the same pages. And we learn from one another. Learn the truth through one another. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of understanding. The beginning of understanding. Let's really so meditate on it. The beginning. Genesis of understanding. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of understanding. How can you understand the Lord if you don't want to start from the beginning? How can you understand the fear of the Lord if you don't want to start from the beginning? Even throughout the New Testament, God gives, Jesus gives certain examples of him. When he talked about Sodom and Gomorrah, he was there. He was like, it would be better to these people than for Sodom and Gomorrah. He was there. He was there. He led the charge. He talked with Abraham before Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed. He talked about what he already know. Before Abraham was, I am. He's telling you about things. He talked about the children of Nineveh. Oh, he's just read it. No, he talks about it. Because he's sent. He sent Jonah. Does it make sense? He talked with Moses. In the New Testament. And he talked with Moses in the Old Testament. Moses know him. Moses and Elijah talked with Moses when they went up the mountaintop. They're like, let us make an altar for Moses and Elijah and you. He talked with, he's the Lord. He shows you he's Lord. He talked with Elijah too. In the Old Testament and the New Testament. Oh, I just got confirmation. Elijah must appear. Elijah did appear. Only people knew it were his disciples. And he said, don't tell nobody until after the fact. So Elijah did appear, appear to Christ before he went to the cross. Wow, confirmation. But you got to believe it. And you got to read it. And you got to study it to show yourself approved. You understand? Outside studying, studying outside the Bible, it can kind of distract you. I'm going to tell you something about I didn't figure it out as a follower of Christ. Sometimes people are, get so focused on giving you the devil's characteristics and Lucifer's characteristics that they come become endorsers of Lucifer and endorsers of Satan. Because they're not telling you anything about the Bible anymore. They're telling you more about Lucifer. You got to be careful. Studying outside the word will lead you outside the word. Now you focus so much on Satan and the devil that you're not telling people about the Lord. Do you see the deceit? But I've been there. I've been there. That's why I can talk about it. And God stopped me. And you're talking about the devil too much. Talk about me. Tell them about me. Don't need to tell them about Lucifer's agenda. Tell them about my agenda. That'll make Lucifer nothing. You understand? Show them my power. Don't tell them about who the friend of the, the who run this world are so much that they get persuaded and want to join the team of the world. Talk about me so they can want to join my team. Do you understand the deception behind talking about other things too much? 
because you, you, you're not talking about the Lord anymore. Now you got people intrigued to go learn about the devil. Been there, done that, won't do it no more. I talk about him when he needs to be talked about. If you read the Bible, how often do they talk about the devil? Not a real lot. Behold, I saw Satan fall like lightning. What is it, Jeremiah, Isaiah? When they talked about Satan's fall, in the beginning they talked about Satan. And Job, they talked about They don't talk about him that much. They just let you know he's there. Because it's not about him. It's about Jesus. It's about Jesus. But yes, he's giving you characteristics of what the children of Satan act like. You understand? But that's all you need to know. Because you need that discernment. You don't need a lot. Just know who your God is. You understand? Know who your God is. He said, fear them. Don't fear them which destroy the what? What he said, don't fear them with this which destroy the body, but fear them, fear him which destroy both body and soul. All these Satanists or whatever, they've been around. All these worshipers of Lucifer, they've been around. But guess who's been around before them? God. So that's all you need to worry about. That's the only person you need to fear. No need to fear the mark of the beast that may come. Let's get right with the Lord so when it does happen, you're clear. Does it make sense to you? Does it make sense to you now? You understand? Yes, he tell you about these things so you'll be ready when they happen. Right? That's why the Lord tells you about these things. Not for you to be afraid of it. So you need to be prepared. You understand? We ought to know that Satan and his workers are going to be destroyed. But we know they carry the risk too. You see, Satan likes to get people drawn to him in so many different ways and forms and fashions. Whether it be through this, whether it be through that, whether it be the, making these Things feel like Christ. They say Satan comes as an angel of light. He disguises himself. Makes you do things that are not of God. He don't make you do it. Try to convince you to do things that are not of God. And I focus on Christmas a lot because I know it's not of God. But everybody's like, it's okay. It's fine. It's fine. You understand? But it's not of God. You got to be very careful in this world, man. God loves you so much that he gave you these words to live by. That's how much he loves you. How can they hear without a preacher? How can they hear without a teacher? How can they understand? You can become the teacher. If you want to. He said, how should the blind lead the blind? Unless they both fall into a ditch. How can the blind lead the blind? And he said something in John that should touch you all in a very special way. He said, they left with us, but they left from among us. But they still out there. They started off in truth, but they ain't in the truth no more. Do the math. They still out there manipulating. But they are not with us. They left off following us. By leaving off following us, they left off following Christ. So they follow something else. But they similar to us. Why? Because they know what we're about. I'm not adding to the word. Read between the lines. There's a lot of people out there that claim to be Christians and claim to be followers of Christ that are, and they come in wolves and sheep clothing. Acting like they love the same God you love. But they don't. They worship something else. 
you know, most people don't like hand signals and stuff like that. They, they all, I mean, it's just, it's just something. You think it's coincidental that even the Muslim faith use that same hand signal that's that Baphomet sign? You understand? And you see it played, plastered all over the world. And they do it like it's a joke. And then they convince your little children to do it. In the form of wrestling. Little children, keep yourself from idols. The Pope does it. So many other people do it. And they try to do it in a joker matter. And everybody like, hey, look at them. It's all fun and games. Not to me. It shows their allegiance. Because no Christian, no follower of Christ is going to do things like that as a joke. Because they know how serious it is And you can't play with the Lord The Lord is, does not play You understand? He don't play games You can't serve two masters So choose now who you want to serve If you're a follower of Christ No need for you throwing up these hand signals As a joke Now you're teaching this to your kids and Now you're leading them blindly Like I told you It's going to come a time Where the people who love the world and love their, his father, the little prince of the world, they're going to start showing themselves. There's nothing you can do about it. Just get yourself right and spread the word in truth so you can put a lot of people out of the fire. But saying things are okay that are not okay is not Christ-like. Christ never, Jesus never, Said any sinful nature He never said what the Pharisee was doing Okay he called them like he said You are of your father the devil He never sugarcoated the word Ever He didn't sugarcoat it in the beginning And then it's sugarcoated in the New, Contest New Testament He never sugarcoated the word He always called it like he saw it He never said the Pharisees were okay with what they were doing He told them who they worked for so as a Christian, sometimes you're going to tell people who they work for, whether they want to hear it or not. If you were my father, you'll hear me, but you ain't, because you are your father, the devil. He beat around a bush for a little while. They say, you know what? Forget it. You are your father, the devil, and the worst day he's been a liar and a murderer from the beginning, and you're going to be the same thing. You are the same thing. You ain't no different from him. Because your characteristics say it. You understand? You know, like, if you pay attention to the world, you will see some things that are not of God. Last year, the Pope had a, was meeting with all the different other religious leaders and was saying, came into agreement that there are other ways to get to the same God. Now, but people still follow this Pope. I don't understand. Well, I do understand. Because he's not of God. No man of God who believes in the God of the Bible is going to say there are other ways to reach God. Only person would do that was be, be a liar. And no lies of God. Lies are from the devil. To convince people that there are other ways. And there's only one way according to my Bible. So what Bible is he going by? Sound like he's more going on with a list of Crowley's teaching. Do as thou wilt. No telling what other books of Satan the Catholic Church go off of. And they seducing many. They'll give them strong delusion that they will believe lies. Not just a lie. Lies. But then when you start telling people the truth, hey man, you just thinking too deep into this. I'm not thinking too deep into anything. I'm going by what the word says. You understand? You see, in the Old Testament, God told you to destroy altars. Not join in with them. He told you to destroy idols. Their workmanships of gold. Their statues. Their groves of trees. He said, destroy them. Don't take them into your houses. 
He didn't say take them and do exactly what they do. He said destroy them. It's a difference between destroy and keep. He said don't do it because you're gonna if you keep doing it, you're gonna cause your children to be seduced. Does it make sense to you now? If you keep a lot of things around, you're not only hurting yourself, you're hurting your children. Halloween is fun, but it's evil. So what's you gonna choose? The fun over the evil? Do you understand? Pay attention, people. I was watching a movie, and I, I take, thank God, can talk to you through anyway. A movie called Grandpa War with Robert De Niro, Christopher Walken, a few other people. And it's a little girl in there. She, she loves the holiday of Christmas. She loves it. So for her birthday, they throw her Christmas party in July, so to say. You understand? But it's kind of a weird thing that happened. The Christmas party was torn apart. Santa, the person who played Santa Claus was boosted out of his seat. The whole gathering just went to hell. Just was just destroyed. And I pay attention to things like that. I'm like, hmm, what's God trying to tell me? Instead of embracing these things in your church, it's time to destroy them. Instead of trying to tell people, I know it's not of Christ, but I'm going to keep it here. It's time to do like Jesus said in the change tables. And uh, when he went up there and he threw this, the exchange tables over for what they were doing wrong. It's time for us as Christians to throw things over. To break them up. To stop them. You understand? Or leave the churches. That indulge in them. You understand? Why does the world do these things? Put Easter and Resurrection Sunday on the same day. When the Bible tells you that Easter been around. Before Jesus was crucified, Herod or Pontius or whoever it was, was about to celebrate Easter. You understand? Was about to celebrate Easter while Jesus was still here. But Easter is about Christ's resurrection. How can that be? Because pagan practices have been around for a long time. Don't let the world confuse you people. God is not the author of confusion. If Easter was about Christ, when I type it in, it wouldn't show all this other stuff. If Christmas was about Christ, when I type it in, it wouldn't show all these other things. That's confusion. Now, who's the author of confusion? Okay. That's why God is straightforward. I told him his, his instructions are specific. They're down to the wire. 50 rings of brass, 20 rings of silver, 100 cubits long. Don't let nobody else come up here, Moses, but you. Let everybody else be down there while I commune with you. God is very specific. And his instructions it's because he leaves no room for error. His, his book is perfect. Even if people have taken anything out of it, if you're spirit led, you're going to come to the knowledge of the truth through the same word that they supposedly took things out of. You're still going to get the truth. Because God said, Behold, the Holy Spirit of Comfort will come and it will teach you all things, it will bring all things into remembrance. So, no need to worry about that. Don't need to focus on what's been taken out. Focus on what God is going to give you outside of his word. Have a blessed day.